Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India This is Stochastic Processor Model 5 Continuous Time Marco Chain. I am planning for uh, 6 to 8 lectures uh, in this model and I am going to start the lecture 1 with the definition of uh, continuous time Marco Chain, then the derivation of uh, Kolmogorov differential equations and I am going to give uh, some simple examples uh, for the continuous time Marco Chain and also I am planning to give the stationary and the limiting distributions of continuous time Marco chain in this lecture. Let me start with the introduction of continuous time Marco chain. The continuous time uh, Marco chain is a special case of a stochastic process. This is a stochastic process in which the Markov property is satisfied, therefore it is called a Markov process. Based on the classification of a state space and the parameter space whether it is a discrete or continuous, you can classify the Markov process. Suppose the state space is a discrete, then we say that Markov process is a Markov chain. along with the state space is a discrete, if the parameter space is also discrete, then we say discrete time Markov chain. That means a stochastic process satisfying the Markov property, the state space is discrete and the parameter space is also discrete. This we have discussed in the model 4. A stochastic process satisfying the Markov property whose state space is discrete and the parameter space is continuous, then that stochastic process is called a continuous time Markov chain that we are going to discuss in the model 5. There are other type of Markov process also which has the state space is continuous and the parameter space is also continuous that is called the Brownian motion or Vernier process that we are going to discuss in the model 7. Now in this lecture we are going to discuss the continuous time Markov chain under model 5. Let me start with the definition, definition of continuous time Markov chain. A discrete state continuous time that means the state space is discrete that means uh, the possible values of uh, the random variable going to take the value for possible values of parameter space that is going to be finite or countably infinite therefore the state space is going to be called it as a discrete. Continuous time means uh, the parameter space or the possible values of the t that collection is a uh, uncountably infinite. Therefore, it is called a continuous time that means a parameter space is continuous. So, a discrete state continuous time stochastic process x of t for t greater than or equal to 0 need not be t greater than or equal to 0 also, but here I am making the very simplest one. So, the x of t for fixed t it is a random variable for every t that collection that is going to be a stochastic process and the state space is discrete and parameter space is continuous and that stochastic process is going to be call it as a continuous time Markov chain if it satisfies the following condition. If you take n time points arbitrary time points n plus 1 time points that is a t naught to t n you can say the t naught can be 0 also and with this uh, inequality t naught less than t1 less than t2 and so on tn 
and you take the any arbitrary t that is a t n less than t with this inequality. For fixed t that x of t is going to be a random variable therefore, now we are going to find out the conditional distribution for this n plus 1 random variable with the, the random variable x of t. That means, uh, at t naught you have a x of t naught that is a random variable, at t 1 x of t 1 is a random variable. Similarly, at t n x of t n is a random variable. You have n plus 1 random variable with this n random variable given that means, it takes already some values with x naught, x 1, x n so on respectively and you are finding the conditional CDF for the random variable x of t. So, that means, you have a n plus 2 random variables taken at the arbitrary time points t naught to t n as well as small t and you are finding the conditional CDF of the random variable x of t given that already the other n plus 1 random variables taken at those arbitrary time points it taken the value x naught x 1 and so on till x n it is taken already these values that conditional distribution conditional CDF if that is same as again it is a conditional CDF of x of t given the last random variable x of t n is equal to x n. So, these n plus 1 time points are arbitrary time points. So, if it satisfies for all n for every n that means, uh, the conditional distribution of a n plus 1 random variable is same as the conditional distribution of the last random variable. If this property is satisfied by the discrete state continuous time stochastic process for arbitrary time points, then that stochastic process is called a continuous time Marco chain. This is very important concept this is called the Marco property that means, uh, the, the t is a sort of a future. So, what is the probability that the random variable will be in some state at the future time point t given that you know the present state that is a uh, where the system is in time point t n that is small x n and I know the past information starting from x of t naught till x of t n minus 1. I know the information that means, uh, what is the probability that uh, future the random variable x of t will be in some state given that it was in the states x naught at time point t naught, it was in the state x 1 at the time point t 1 and so on. Latest at the time point t n the system was in the state x n that is same as what is the probability that the future the random variable will be in some state at time point t given that it is now in the state x n at the time point t n. That means, a future given present as well as the past information is same as future given only the present which is and independent of the past information that is called the memoryless property or Marco property. So, since this property is satisfied by the stochastic process which has the state space is a discrete and the parameter space is continuous then that stochastic process is called a continuous time Marco chain. So, this is the definition now we are going to give some more properties over the continuous time Marco chain and uh, some simple examples as well as the I am going to explain the limiting distribution and the stationary distribution for continuous time Marco chain in this lecture. Let me show the sample path over the time t that is x axis, the y axis is x of t. So, the system was in some state at time point 0, it was in the same state for some time, then it moved into the some other state, then it was there in that state for some time, then it moved into some other state and so on. If you see the sample path, 
the following observation the system can stay in some state for some amount of time after that it will move to the some some state so there is no equal interval of a system going to be in some state also it can be some positive amount of time the system can be in the some discrete states so here the observations are the state space is discrete whereas the, the parameter space is continuous and the time spent in each state that is going to be a some positive amount of time before moving into any other states so this is the observation in the sample path which i have drawn now i am going for few notations to study or to study the behavior of a continuous time markov chain whenever the markov chain that means here it is a continuous time markov chain it is a time homogeneous then the conditional probability of system being in the state j at time point t plus capital t given that the capital t it was in the state i that does not depend on capital t here we assume that the state changes from i to j at a future time point t plus capital t this uh, transition probability says the system was in the state i at the time point uh, t let me draw the simple uh, diagram the system was in the state uh, i at the capital t then what is the probability that the system will be in the state j what is the probability that the system will be in the state j at the time point t plus t it is independent of a capital t whenever the markov chain is going to be a time homogeneous for any t greater than or equal to 0 that means the actual time does not matter only the length matters the length of the transition time that means the small t is matters not the capital t whenever it is a time homogeneous that is that we can denote it as a pij of t because it depends on only the interval not the actual time therefore it is a a function of small t p i j of t that means uh, that is the transition probability in the system so the same thing can be written as the p i j of t this is a notation what is the transition probability that the system was what is the probability that the system will be in the state j given that it was in the state i at time 0 since it is valid for uh, any interval of uh, t to t plus t it is independent of capital t therefore i can represent in this transition probability as a probability that the system in the state j at time t given that it was in the state i at time 0 this denoted by p i j of t so in this notation we should remember it's a transition probability with the suffix two letters i comma j of t this also call it as a stationary transition probability stationary means it is a time invariant only the length of the interval is matters similarly i am denoting the next notation pi j of t the pj of t is a conditional probability whereas uh, the pi j of t that is a unconditional one what is the probability that the system will be in the state j at time t there is a possibility system would have been uh, coming to the state j before time t for uh, at time 0 itself or it would have come before just before t whatever it is this probability will give the interpretation what is the probability that the system will be in the state j at time t only it gives the information at the time t this is a unconditional probability i need a uh, another notation for a uh, initial state probability vector also that is a pi not pi not is a vector which consists of entities 
what is the probability that the system was in the state 0 at time 0. Therefore, this I can write it as pi j of 0 that is nothing but what is the probability that the system was in a state j at time 0. So, this is the meaning of pi j of 0. What is the probability that the system will be in the state uh, sorry the system was in the state uh, j at time 0 that is pi j of 0 like with these entities you are framing the vector that is pi naught. So, in this uh, we are giving a uh, three notations one is the transition probability p i j of t that is a conditional probability the other one is unconditional probability that is pi j of t and uh, initial state probability vector pi naught. Using this I am trying to find out what is the distribution of x of t for any time t. For any time t x of t will form, make a stochastic process here it is a continuous time Marco chain the default one is a time homogeneous uh, continuous time Marco chain and our interest is to find out what is the distribution of the random variable x of t. It has the probability mass function that is pi j of t and if you make a summation over s where s is a state space that summation is going to be 1. If I know the initial, prob initial state probability vector with the entity is pi i of 0 as well as uh, if I know the transition probability of system moving from the state i to j from 0 to small t. I can able to find out what is the probability mass function of system being in the state j at time t that is uh, pi j of t that is same as probability that x of t is equal to j that is same as uh, I can make a summation, I can make a conditional what is the probability that the system will be in the state j at time t given that it was in the state i multiplied by what is the probability that a system was in the state i at time 0 for all possible values of i where s is big, s is nothing but the state space. I know that a pi sorry I know that the probability of a x of 0 is equal to i that is same as pi i of 0. And this transition probability since the Marco chain is a time homogeneous so 0 to t that is nothing but uh, 0 to 0 is the time point and t is uh, any time point and i is the state in which the system was in the state uh, in the at time 0. So, p i j of t if I multiply pi i of 0 p i j of t for all possible values of i I will get the probability that the system will be in the state j at time t. That means, if you want to find out the distribution of x of t for any time t, I need a initial state probability vector as well as a the transition probability of system moving from one state to other state, other states. This is given usually the initial probable, initial state probability vector is given. So, what we want to find out is p i j of t. So, how to find the p i j of t that derivation I am going to do it in the another 2-3 slides.